The safety of the men throughout his widespread department is an important matter with A.E. Perlman, chief engineer of the Rio Grande. He has a wholehearted respect for every man who helps to prove that railroading is not a dangerous game, that the stigma of danger has been created by negligence, thoughtlessness, and inattention to common sense safety practices. Perlman makes it a point to call attention to good safety records. Some time ago, he personally congratulated all the men working under this roadmaster's jurisdiction. They had achieved a commendable safety record maintaining 250 miles of track for a year without a reportable injury. They proved, as thousands of other railroaders have proved, that you can work around the clock and around the calendar if you simply use your head, think safety, and work safely. To the ordinary guy, it's just a railroad track. But to you men who build it and maintain it, it's a lot more than that. It's accomplishment, a fine job well done. Let's discuss how much it costs to put it there. Not how much in dollars and cents and steel and wood, but how much in needless physical suffering to men who didn't use their heads, who found injury and pain and sometimes death for their carelessness. Railroading and football have a lot in common. There is the little bit the public sees, and behind the scenes there's the endless planning and working and perfecting that they don't see. It all adds up to teamwork. Whether you're a football player or a section hand, teamwork gets the job done. Teamwork calls for a lot of skull practice. That's a football phrase for use your head, pal. The football team has a captain. He supervises the play. The section foreman does the same thing. He checks that lineup in the morning and all through the day. He has the current timetable, the correct time, and permission to use the main track. His first responsibility is the protection of his men. He has to be alert and thinking ahead every minute. Safety depends on teamwork, and teamwork starts when you roll out that motor car in the morning. Every day you chalk up here is a score against injury and death. Check times and line up before you put that car on the track. After you tangle with a train, it's too late. Give that car a thorough inspection, foreman. The safety of you and your men depends on it. If there's anything wrong, now's the time to fix it, not later. With that car and those tools, and everything else you do, develop the habit of being neat. It goes hand in hand with safety. They're both plain common sense. Check your tools every morning. Don't take out a defective tool. Good tools do a safe job. Poor tools imperil your safety. Fit a piece of air hose around the striking face to prevent splintering at the edges. Don't endanger yourself by using a defective tool. It's your responsibility to report it to your foreman. It's his responsibility to take the faulty tool out of service and replace it with a serviceable tool. When a tool's in this condition, don't tape or replace the handle. Exchange the whole tool for a new one. Teamwork and skull practice pay off here. Every man in the right place for the job. Good footing. Lifting with your legs instead of your back. Keeping your feet in the clear. Safety includes little things, like twisting Lizzie's tail. It may kick, so don't put your thumb around that handle. Have good balance. Keep your face and body clear of the crank.
As soon as the car is rolling, make a brake test. Don't start something you can't stop. At least two men facing forward and one watching the rear. That's the safe way to play it. Sloppy habits breed trouble. If you throw your tools on there any which way, you probably do your work like that, too. And a disorderly gang is merely the reflection of a sloppy foreman. What do you have, teamwork or hard work? A gang without teamwork wastes a lot of energy and always runs the risk of an accident. No inspection, no check on the time or lineup. Nothing but grief and bad temper. Off they go, hell-bent for trouble. Dropped a shovel, never missed it. No insurance company would take the risk on a gang like this. They didn't miss the shovel, but that bar may give them a bad time. If it falls under a wheel, it'll bounce them up plenty. The foreman had a short day, but he sure got it the hard way. Probably won't enjoy the extra hours of leisure. When your motor car is following another one, maintain a safe interval of at least 600 feet between the cars. Don't do it this way. You endanger the men on both cars. That's a close call. Not keeping a sharp lookout for grade crossings is a good way to keep from living a long time. Go ahead, give him hell, he's got it coming. He's a pretty good Joe in a lot of ways, but awful short on brains. He endangered his men, picked up a body full of sprains and bruises, smashed up his motor car. He'll probably lose his job. And that sign was there riding with him all the time. Safety first. When you go romping down the country without checking your lineup or watching for unscheduled traffic, you're inviting the kiss of death. Maybe you'll get hit over the head with a high-balling locomotive. That's a light engine, 200 tons light. There have been men who weren't able to jump soon enough. Whenever you get off your motor car to do some work, set the car off too, where it won't foul the track. Even if the work is just a few steps away, use that set off. It may save your neck. Get that car off the track. You think that's carrying safety too far? Overdoing it? Go read the record. It happened just this way, right on this spot. Some of you knew him. A lot of you heard about it afterward. Maybe you forgot about it. Anyway, here's how it happened. He didn't hear that train until it was almost on top of him. Then he tried desperately to yank his car off the track. Nobody knows what he was thinking just then. Probably figured he could jump clear. He was riding his luck, but death was riding the head in. A thousand tons of freight slapped him on the back. A trainman came on the run. He might as well have walked. Can't help a corpse. They picked the pieces of the car from the front of the engine. That's the car he didn't set off because he wasn't going to be there very long. But he stayed there quite a while. Then the coroner came. That's how a negligent signal maintainer turned into a vital statistic before his time. He got his name in the papers, but nobody reads his own obituary. It's all in the record. You'll find him there, a figure on the fatality list. Do you like your wife and kids? Do you like to eat? Do you like to dance? To tip a beer with the boys or play poker with your pals? If you do, take a look at the record sometime. Let it sink in good.
Heavy work calls for heavy planning and plenty of teamwork. Every man in his place and one man directing the operation. Center the clamp on the rail. Stand clear of the ends. Don't move the rail without a man and guide rope on each end to control the motion. Nudging an adzer into position with your knee is foolhardy and dangerous. Keep both feet beyond the tie ends. Watch for ground irregularities. A foot that slipped under that vortex of cutting steel would be mincemeat in a split second. Rail laying is a heavy operation that demands the utmost care every moment you work. Mark the middle of every rail before you move it. Be sure the hook is properly fastened and dead center. The crane operator moves the rail only on signal from the one man in charge of the work. On the ground, stand clear. Never take your eyes off that piece of steel, nor let any part of your body get beneath it. Guided with both hands held over the rail head. Never place your hand around the end or under the base. Pay special attention to the placing of your feet. The safety of his men is a good foreman's first consideration. Before he moves that human cargo, he inspects the whole train, looks over his motor car, checks that every man is aboard and safely seated. He exchanges signals with the man on the end before he starts the train rolling. He never pushes a train, always pulls it. That way, he's right out in front so he can see where he's going. An alert foreman never permits his men to be a hazard to each other. Now he does what he should have done in the first place. He spreads them out. Ample space between men allows each to work without accidentally striking the man next to him. A safety-minded foreman who thinks ahead spreads his men out before they come to any grief. An aligning bar is no substitute for a rail fork. If you use the wrong tool, you suffer the consequences. Safer always to use the tool designed for the job. Know the right tool to use and know how to use it. Even a claw bar is dangerous in the hands of a careless man. Place your hands far enough down on the claw bar to avoid smashing them on the opposite rail. In an operation like this, teamwork really counts. Unless the gang is carefully coordinated, somebody stands a chance of being hurt. Precise teamwork includes balance, rhythm, careful footwork, every man working in unison. A good foreman and smart men get the job done safely. But they didn't smarten up until after they'd ruined a man's foot one day. They never paid much attention to carrying a rail before that, but lack of coordination made the task difficult and dangerous. They were all stepping on a rail instead of over it. One man slipped and another man was caught. They all wised up after that, but it didn't make the injured man feel any better. He did a stretch on crutches, found out they're not much of a substitute for healthy legs and feet. If you like to get around on your own two feet, give them the protection they deserve. Look at him great. Yesterday, he scoffed at safety shoes. Give your feet the right kind of protection, and you get a different answer. He can still smile. Safety shoes are a lot easier on the feet than the plaster shoes the hospital puts out.
There's nothing spectacular about shoes. They're pretty common. But did you ever stop to think that every type of shoe is designed for some specific job? Shoes for baseball, tennis, bowling, golf, football, field boots, ski boots, dress shoes and walking shoes. Shoes of every description and every one of them built to function better than any other on some one particular kind of work. There's a shoe designed for you, too. A shoe designed for your needs on your work. The safety shoe, the best foot insurance a section man can get, or any man who works with heavy material. That strong steel toe cap is a few ounces of prevention worth months or even a lifetime of cure. Ask the cripple who never wore them. Or ask the man who might have been a cripple. He was wearing them when he needed them. Safety shoes look like any other shoe. They wear and bend like any other shoe. But you really notice a difference when you put your foot in the wrong place at the wrong time. Your feet are no more important than your hands. Avoid injury by knowing the right thing to do at the right time. Don't be a man who's long on brawn and short on brains. A rupture is hard to laugh off. Get help to lift heavy, hard to handle materials. These men aren't weak. They're playing it safe. Be smart with your strength and you'll be stronger longer. A foreman's most important duty and responsibility is the protection of his men. Don't hesitate to send out flagmen whenever the need arises, and send them out far enough to flag the heaviest and fastest trains. A gang concentrating on its work must be protected from train movements at all times. A good flagman will go a mile or more before setting his torpedoes and taking up his post. Constant vigilance is a prime safety factor. The lie of the land, the nature of the work being done, the weather and visibility. All these govern how many flagmen or special lookouts are needed and where they should be stationed to provide ample protection from approaching traffic. Failing to protect his gang is the worst mistake a foreman can make. These men are working at the mouth of a tunnel deep in a canyon around a blind curve on mainline track where traffic is heavy. The foreman is forced by close clearances to place a track jack inside the rail. That definitely calls for a flag. And the flagman, who should have been on the job before all the rest, hasn't even started yet. A half hour too late, the foreman checks the time. Suddenly, a diesel horn stabs the air. The foreman yells a warning, shouts orders in all directions. The flagman charges up the track, flagging wildly. The jack is stuck. It can derail the train. Frantically, they try to free it. The train can't stop. At the last moment, the jack comes out and they dive for safety only a moment before the engine thunders by. That foreman jeopardized his men, endangered a train, its crew, and cargo, all because he didn't know, didn't care, or didn't think. Thumbing through the records of railroaders who went west before their time, you find that many of them actually committed suicide. Inattention, negligence, common carelessness were the instruments of death. Here's one straight from the record. A slide fence is a precarious place to work while a train is passing. The rule of safety is to climb down to the ground and get clear of the fence and track when a train approaches. This man knew that rule. For some reason known only to him, he broke it. The roar of that train is the voice of doom. Get down, man. Get down. At the crucial moment, he can't get loose. He freezes from fright, faints, and the engine wallops him over the head. Death climbed that pole and tagged him out. Every safety rule grows out of tragedy and grim experience. The very existence of the rule is proof that men were maimed or died because they didn't have that rule to go by. Never forget that. Some of you knew that man, some of you didn't. The important thing to remember is that what happened to him can happen to you. Whenever you break a rule born of another man's misfortune, you're asking for it, begging for the same treatment he got. 
Whether you repair fences or swing a pick or buck a barco tamper or do any of a thousand jobs, it can happen to you if you don't know and practice the safety precautions that experience has dictated for that particular job. Today, only one man gets hurt for every ten men who got it 20 years ago. That means you're heading in the right direction. But the one man who gets it today, he's not going to feel any better about it. And his family's not going to find any consolation either when they go looking for a casket. Scaffolds and ladders have played the villain in many a B&B &B disaster. They're not dangerous if you take a few simple precautions. A ladder not properly blocked and braced can let a man down with a jolt and a few broken bones. To prevent that, block the bottom securely in place so it can't slip. Brace both sides and fasten it at the top. Then it can't slide. When going up, coming down, or working on a ladder, always face the ladder. In any other position, you're bound to be off balance. A man who carries tools and materials up a ladder is almost as stupid as the foreman who tells him or allows him to do it. With one arm loaded, your balance is bad. A board or tool getting tangled in the ladder can tip you off in a nasty fall. You endanger anyone working below you. Sooner or later, someone gets hurt. To avoid accidents and make things easier on yourself, use a hand line to raise or lower all tools and materials. A good safe scaffold has plenty of planking and guardrails to prevent falls. If any question arises, put on another board. You can't go wrong on that. Test every plank and guardrail before you put it on the scaffold. A board that can't take this treatment should never leave the ground. When you put the board on, use plenty of nails. They're cheaper than accidents so fasten it securely. Perhaps the importance of that guardrail never occurred to you. In that case, take a lesson from what happened to this man. It never occurred to him either until that crucial moment when his wrench slipped and he slipped with it. He was out cold and pretty well broken up when the men got to him. He didn't die, but for months after that he had nothing to do except lie flat on his back and think about the guardrail that wasn't there. Making it twice as tough was the realization that he had no one but himself to blame for the shape he was in. What's the value of an eye? Yes, priceless. Protect your eyes at all costs. They're delicate and irreplaceable. Twenty-four hours a day, your own safety is your own responsibility. 
But on the job, the foreman is equally responsible. When he calls you about those goggles hanging uselessly around your neck, when he makes you put them on, he's not batting his gums just to be bossy. He's doing you a good turn, reminding you before you suffer the consequences of your own neglect. Protect your eyes every instant, and you'll never need a seeing eye dog. Whenever you get a notion that those goggles are a nuisance, or that your foreman's harping about eye protection is a lot of baloney, think of yourself in this fellow's shoes. Would you rather wear goggles or pedal brooms? It's all up to you. Sometimes there's a wise guy in the crowd. Nobody can tell him anything. No goggles, just looking for trouble. And didn't see it when it came. That's all it takes to lose an eye. How would you like to go through this operation three or four times a day for the rest of your life? Not pleasant to think about, is it? And it can happen to you, too. Every moment that you work with your goggles hanging around your neck or in your pocket, when they should be protecting your eyes, you're pushing your luck, asking for what this man got. Yes, it can happen to you. You can buy new eyes. They may make you look better, but they can't see for you. Those eyes you have right now, the ones that are looking at this motion picture. You can't get any more like them. You don't want to live out your life in blind darkness behind glassy artificial eyes. So use your goggles every moment you need them. You men of maintenance play leading roles in the mighty drama of railroading. Whenever a train rolls by, you can take justifiable pride in your splendid accomplishment. That's why you work, why you build strength and safety into the track. So gleaming strands of steel can carry a nation's commerce, linking man with man in common purpose, moving America. You watch those trains with interest and satisfaction, too, because that traffic is your bread and butter. You build safety into that track and take reasonable pride in doing it. You can build that same safety into your life and habits. There's no need to take the risks and suffer the grief you've witnessed in this picture. Thousands of railroaders don't. After a day's work well done and safely done, you can head for home whole and healthy. Many a foreman brings his gang home safely day after day and year after year. Common sense and safety go together like ham and eggs. Carelessness and negligence eventually lands you in the hospital or the morgue, and you're a long time dead. You don't want to be planted prematurely. So be wise, be safe, and be here tomorrow. Just use your head, man. Use your head.